I'm quite confused in many ways about Why Did You Kill Me? This is a, a film out on Netflix. And I say a film. I thought this was a film when I started watching it. It's actually a documentary. It's about an hour and a half long. And for the first half of it, I thought it was a fictitious film with a screenplay that had been made to look like a true crime episode. And they exist. Those films exist. And some are done very well. Usually I don't like them. This one I actually thought, as a, as a, as a narrative, was pretty interesting. And then about halfway through, something clicked. And I went onto the IMDb page and it occurred to me then that this is actually a true crime documentary. And now I don't know how I feel because part of me thought it was a, a well edited story and the characters were interesting and believable enough, but there were certain things that just felt unrealistic. And then when I learned that it was based on truth, it's kind of hard to suddenly think, well, I'm thinking this is unrealistic and now you're telling me it actually happened. It's, it's peculiar. This is um, it's directed by Frederick Monk and it's about the murder of a 24-year-old called Crystal. Um, she was murdered in 2006. She was shot. This looks at how basically um, her mother Belinda and also Crystal's best friend Amber used MySpace to track down information that would lead them to the killer and using Crystal's picture as that profile picture, but under a different name, under the name of Angel, which I thought was a nice name choice, um, to make certain gang members fall in love with her, to get information, to find the killer. On the face of it, that's clever. But there are many things wrong with that. First of all, how would that gang member not recognise her picture if they all lived in the same area? Surely he'd have seen it on the news. I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm reading too much into what gang members pay attention to in the news. And secondly, her best friend was, I, I believe it said she was 14, about to turn 15. Basically single-handedly helping to solve a murder seems unreal. And maybe that's what the film's meant to be celebrating. The fact that this young girl, this tech-savvy social media user... Uh, as a teenager, was able to go through all of these um, activities to find um, what actually happened. The police officer uh, did actually say in this that he didn't know she was doing this and that he wished that, you know, she'd told him. And that's absolutely the truth. There is no way at all that a murder investigation team would let a 14, 15-year-old girl set up a social media profile with the intention of communicating directly with the killer, unless it was supervised. They absolutely would not do that. And I just find it hard to believe that everything went according to the way the documentary says. If it did, then that's pretty interesting. But there are things that I just think it focused too much on certain aspects and not enough on other aspects. I still don't feel like I have a well-rounded picture of every aspect of this case. So in terms of the way the narrative was presented, I feel like it's a bit back and forth and up and down with focus in the wrong way. The editing is really good. I like the way it was edited together. I was going to praise the cast for their acting until I realised it was a, a true crime documentary. So the performances are good. Um, you know, everybody who's interviewed is what I would expect. Um, I'm not a big fan of her best friend's attitude. She just seems... I don't know, she seems far too happy about her role in this. Um, I mean, yeah, everybody would want to track down their best friend's killer if they were in that unfortunate situation, but there was just something about that, those interviews, that just made me feel really uncomfortable. It's interesting, once you know it's a true crime documentary, but it's not really as dark or as gritty as basically any other true crime documentary I've seen. Were it a work of fiction, then... Absolutely, it would be a great example of how to do a, well, I guess a mockumentary, a true crime mockumentary would be a great example of that, which is what I thought it was. As an actual true crime documentary, it's not perfect. It's not really spine chilling. I never felt the eeriness of 
catfishing on social media. It never really captured that essence. Good use of archive footage, CCTV, police interview footage, great use of all of that. The atmosphere wasn't right. I never really felt emotionally involved in this. I never felt like we had to find Crystal's killer. I never felt, as I said, like we were being told about the dark side of social media, about how you can pretend to be somebody else and manipulate people's feelings, even if it is for the greater good. Read the other true crime documentary. It's not great. I prefer to think of it as a work of fiction. I don't know, now that it's been edited and released, what Crystal's family actually think of the final outcome. Certainly, I think they told her story well and have kept her memory alive. They, their role in this um, you know, was well presented for the most part. But as a true crime documentary, it's weak. It's very, very weak. If, you, if it were a work of fiction, it would be pretty great. But in terms of trying to solve a crime through the documentary, probably one of the least gripping documentaries I've ever seen.